All right, guys, welcome back. We are up to episode seven of our drift cart series. By now, you should have your basic cart finished driving, sliding around with all your mates. Your pro cart is up to the point where you can drive it, but right now we're gonna start pulling it apart again to get into all of the extras that make the pro cart set aside from the basic cart. So first things first on today's episode, we're going to be getting straight into the tail light wiring, mounting of the micro switches, and then we're gonna do a little bit of dash prep for our next video. Let's get into it. Let's do this. Woohoo! Alright, so the first part of the tail light wiring, we are going to need to remove the seat and the seat bracket and we need to remove the key barrel and the key barrel bracket. Keeping that key barrel aside just because we're gonna need that to fit to our dash. Let's, let's remove the things. Let's do this. Okay. Now that we've removed the seat, the seat mount, the key barrel and the key barrel bracket, it's now time to have a look at our taillight wiring kit and open it up and see what's included. Included in the kit is our taillight wiring loom as such. Our bracket that is gonna mount the micro switch for the hydraulic handbrake. And we have our two micro switches. The first thing that we're gonna to need to mount is this bracket to the bracket down here where the brake mask on a reservoir is in order to mount our micro switch. So let's mount that now. So this micro switch bracket that is going to read off the hydraulic handbrake is gonna sit down behind this bracket. I'm gonna sit that in place. Then I need to take the two existing uh, M6 by 18 millimeter long socket head bolts that we removed, put that through the frame bracket, through this micro switch bracket and back through the reservoir and tighten it up. Now look. And Now that we've fitted the bracket, we're going to nip up the two bolts and the nylock nuts. This bracket does have a little bit of adjustment in it. We may need to adjust it in the future, but for the moment, we'll nip it up and then we'll get on to mounting the micro switch. Yep. 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 When we take our micro switch, either of the micro switches out of the packaging, it's going to come with two M3 uh, socket head bolts and some nylock nuts. It also has this long actuator arm on it. This arm we actually need to bend back onto itself in order to give a little bit of cushioning in case somebody accidentally later on overextends the hydraulic handbrake. I'm going to bend this arm back onto itself, show you what it looks like, and then once I fit it, it should become uh, kind of straightforward why we did it like that. Let's get to bending this arm. As I go to bend this, I'm basically just gonna find halfway using my thumb as a bit of a lever and I'm going to start bending that micro switch like such, its actuator arm. Now, we don't wanna bend it flat back onto itself. We wanna have a little bit of a curve in the end here. So if I just start bending it around our micro switch needs to look something like this. So I'm gonna remove these two small M3 socket heads and the nylock nuts, and we'll look at how it's gonna mount. 
It's now time to mount our micro switch to our micro switch bracket. I've laid out the fasteners just here. These two small M3 socket head bolts are going to go down through the top in the two required holes. There's only two holes that it can go through. These two nylock nuts that are included are going to act as a spacer. Then we're going to sit the micro switch in place, followed by two flat washers and the two M3 nylock nuts that are going to tighten on the bottom. We'll get it fitted, get in there, give you a closer view, and you'll be able to see how it goes together. We've got our micro switch bracket mounted in place. We mounted our micro switch underneath with our two M3 going down through the top of the bracket, the two larger nuts as spacers, then our micro switch, then the flat washer, and then the nylock nuts on the bottom. We just cut for a minute off video because it was slightly more fiddly than what we remembered. Now that it's mounted, we could adjust this micro switch arm. Now we can do that in two ways. One, we could adjust or loosen off the two M6 nylock nuts that are holding the bracket to the frame. This will allow us to be able to rotate the micro switch bracket forward and backwards. Or, easier way, we can grab that micro switch arm with some needle nose pliers and just tweak it or bend it out a little bit so that when we pull on the hydraulic handbrake, you can hear the micro switch click or actuate. So I'm going to grab that micro switch and I'm going to adjust it or bend the arm with the needle nose pliers just to the point that I can hear it actuate. There we go. Pull on again. Okay, so I've just bent or tweaked that arm slightly. Now when I pull on the handle, I can hear the micro switch actuate or click. Now the micro switch is fitted, let's move on to mounting of the taillights. So in order to mount the taillights, if we hold them up, there's a shorter lead and a longer lead. This longer lead is gonna to come to the backside closest to us. And this shorter one is gonna go right behind where the brake caliper is mounted. So, I'm going to set it roughly in place with the wiring over the top. Then, this tail light here, the shorter one, is going to pop down underneath. And the longer lead with the tail light is going to go over the top of the two tensioner arms and down underneath. We're now going to spin the frame around slightly, just so you can see where they're going to bolt in place. Because this is one of our pro carts, it has the two taillight tabs. We need to be careful when we mount our taillights to the supply tabs. If we spin this taillight around, it has a plain nut fit on the back. We need to use these nuts when we bolt it in place. Don't try and use a nylock nut. If, if you use a nylock nut, it will probably end up putting too much force on the metal stud that is in the plastic tail light and end up spinning that stud. If that stud starts spinning in the plastic tail light, it's going to be really hard to either tighten up or undo because it's just going to keep spinning. So we're going to loosen off these nuts and the supplied washers, fit our tail lights and then tighten up the nut from the back. So we've got our tail lights mounted, we've tightened up the plain nuts that were supplied with the tail light, making sure that they're kind of just nipped up. If you wanted at this point, you could put a second nylock nut on the back and tighten that up if you're worried about them vibrating loose. You'll probably find this will be fine. We've also paid attention to making sure the wiring is sitting over the top of the tensioners so it can't drop down and touch the axle, the chain or the disc. Okay, we're going to spin the cart back around. We'll show you how to plug the wiring in to the hydraulic handbrake micro switch. All right, so the next step is to grab your tail light loom. Approximately halfway down, you'll find two female spade terminals. One is actually longer than the other one. These are for the micro switch. So the longest one goes to the terminal furthest away and the shorter one, obviously the one closest to us. 
So if we take that female spade terminal that is furthest away or the longest, and we're gonna put it onto the pin for the micro switch that is also the furthest away. So let's squeeze that on. Might require a little bit of force. And yep, we've now fitted that female spade that was the longest to the terminal that was furthest away. Let's get the one that's closest and fit it onto the one here. So we have our two female spade terminals plugged into our micro switch. In essence, it doesn't really matter which way these two terminals go as long as they're both plugged in. All right, in order to fit the next part of the taillight wiring, we need to lift up and remove the foot plate. We've fitted our tail lights to the back, our micro switch halfway down the loom. We've lifted up our foot plate. It's now time to fit the last micro switch that's included in the kit. So before we do this, I'm gonna remove the fasteners that are included and let's then have a look at where it's gonna go and how it's gonna mount. So now that we've mounted our tail lights, our micro switch on our hydraulic handbrake, it's now time to mount the micro switch that's gonna actuate off the brake pedal so that when we push the brake pedal, the tail lights will light up. So if we get in here with the GoPro, we can see there's two white holes. I've just put a little bit of paint pen on them so they stand out. These two holes are where the micro switch is gonna mount in the floor. Now that we've had a look at where the micro switch is gonna to mount to the floor, we need to prep our micro switch ready to fit. In order to prep it, that actuating arm is a little bit too long. So I wanna mark between eight and 10 millimeters in from the end of the actuating arm. Just gonna mark that there with a Sharpie. I'm then gonna grab some side cutters and I'm gonna cut that eight to 10 millimeters off the end of the micro switch actuating arm. Okay, I've cut down the micro switch actuating arm. We can now sit this in place on the floor and have a look at how it's gonna fit. Okay, we have a look at where the micro switch now is gonna sit on the floor. And then we have a little bit of a look sideways at where the actuating arm on the micro switch is gonna be pushed on by the brake pedal just there. When you go to fit this yourself, it will become a lot more apparent. So let's get the switch out and put the fasteners up through the floor. I'm gonna take the two supplied M3 bolts coming up underneath the floor, through the floor, placing the two spacer nuts on top, then the micro switch, then a washer, then the nylock nut, and we're gonna tighten that in place. So let's, let's do that. Let's do it. Let's do it. Let's do it. Yeah. So let's place the two M3 socket air bolts up from underneath. I'm now gonna try and put the two spacer nuts over the top. Getting in here because it's very, very, very fiddly. There we go, there's one spacer nut over the top there. I might get Matt to back up on the GoPro so I can get this one in. I've got my other spacer nut over the top. Let's try and get the micro switch in. Obviously this is a lot easier to do uh, if you don't have a GoPro in the way. Oh, amazing. So there we go. We've got the two M3 socket heads up through the bottom um, with our two spacer nuts, then our micro switch. Now I'm gonna place the two flat washers on top. Sorry, Matt. Like such. And I think I'll get Matt to back away with the GoPro and I'll tighten up the two nylock nuts. So we cut down the actuator arm on our micro switch. We've bolted in place on the floor with the bolt or the socket head bolt up through the floor with a nut as a spacer, then the micro switch, then a flat washer, then the nylock nut on top. We now need to test the micro switch much the same as we did with the hydraulic handbrake. So if I push on the brake pedal, I should be able to hear the micro switch click. So I'm gonna push on that pedal, and I have to push on it pretty hard to get the micro switch to click. So I'm gonna bend the micro switch arm or that actuator arm on the micro switch, just so as soon as I touch the pedal, it clicks 
on and off. On here now with the needle nose pliers, and I'm just gonna just bend that arm ever so slightly. Now if I push on the pedal, it works perfect. So a little bit of a tweak on there. We are now good to finish hooking up or plugging in the rest of that taillight wiring. Again, we have a longer lead and a shorter lead or plug, these two female spade terminals. So the longer lead with the female spade terminal is gonna plug into the terminal furthest away on the micro switch, and the shorter terminal is gonna plug in to the closer. Now, this is exceptionally fiddly and would be probably far easier if we'd plug this in before we bolted the micro switch in place. There's a little side note. So I might actually grab that there, get it started, and then I'm like, oh no, she's gonna go uh, on. So we've got that first one on. Now the one that was furthest away onto that terminal that is closest to us. I'll get it there and plugged in. Awesome, great work, Matthew, go team. We've now plugged in the second micro switch that is gonna actuate on the brake pedal. If you don't wanna plug this one in and you only want the tail lights to light up from the hydraulic handbrake, you could just leave those two plugs tucked somewhere under the floor and it's obviously gonna to continue to work fine. Now that we've mounted and plugged in both micro switches, we need to look at the last bit or terminating the wiring on that taillight wiring loom. The last thing we need to do is connect the earth and the power wiring. So this earth terminal, we can run to the earth that we ran all the rest of the earths for the engine loom to. So I'm gonna undo that, place it over that post with all the other earth terminals, putting nylock nut back in place, and then we'll tighten it up. So we've mounted our earth. We then have these two wires that are together. There is a red and a blue white. If you wanna have the taillights actuate on both the brake pedal and the hydraulic handbrake, both of these get kept together. We're gonna to bear the end of these and we're gonna place a male bullet terminal on the end of these two wires. So let's do that now. So we're gonna strip that blue wire with the white trace and the red wire together. So I'm gonna cut that off, grab my wire strippers, and strip that one, strip that one, twisting the two together. This is gonna make both switches get power and the tail lights will wi uh, light up, sorry, when the hand handbrake, the hydraulic handbrake, or the brake pedal is depressed. I'm now gonna take my red male bullet terminal, twisting it over those two wires. I'll make sure I can see it, yeah, it's in there. Grab my crimps, and crimp that on. This male bullet terminal is gonna be the power supply to the taillights. We've put a male on this one because if it sits and touches anything, it's not gonna matter, it's not gonna arc out. When we do the dash wiring, we're gonna have a power cable coming down from it with a female plug on it that will plug into this. Now that we've pretty much finished off our taillight wiring, let's have a look at what's involved with the dash wiring. In preparation for the dash wiring, there's a couple of things that we need to do. So we have these two plugs that run up to our start stop kill switch. This one here with the green and the black, we're going to unplug. This one's not gonna be needed anymore. And the one here that has the yellow wire with the red trace and the black wire on the side closest to the front of the cart, we're gonna give a couple of inches or about 50 millimeters and we're gonna cut these two wires. So. I grab my side cutters, cut that one, cut that one. Now that I've done this, I can remove the wiring from the start stop kill switch 
all this wiring that runs down the frame, we can remove this and put it to the side as it's no longer going to be needed. Okay, the two wires here that we cut, there's the yellow wire with a red trace and the black wire. These two wires now, we need to put bullet terminals on, both a male and a female. Now, don't pay too much attention to the side that we've cut. If we look at the other side of the plug, this wire here that is the yellow with a red trace, this is going to be the power to the start solenoid and the black wire is actually going to be power. So this one's going to be live. So if I come over to here, it actually changes color for some reason, it is flipped. This one here, the black one, goes into the yellow with a red trace. This one here, we want to put a female bullet end on. That just means at any point, if we unplug this and it was to touch metal, it won't arc out and cause a problem. So I'm going to strip both these wires back, putting a female on this one that is the black that turns into the yellow, and on the other one that is the yellow red that turns into the black, I'm going to put a male terminal on. Let's get that done. So I'm going to strip this one, strip this one, I'm going to strip a little bit more and then I'm going to fold these over because the wires are pretty thin and then double them over. Now obviously if you were more electrically minded, you could remove this plug and replace it with say a Deutsch connector or a different plug. This is just the simplest way to do it and by keeping this factory plug, this is going to allow us to, if we ever need to change wiring looms, we can still unplug it. So I'm going to crimp on that male bullet terminal. There it come. And the other wire, I'm going to put the female bullet terminal. Okay, if we have another look at that, again, don't pay too much attention to the colors of the wires at this end as they've changed when they went through the plug. If we look on this side of the plug, wherever that black wire comes in, that one's gonna be a female bullet end, and where the yellow and red is, that's gonna be a male bullet end. Now that we've got that done, we need to look at where the ignition barrel was plugged in, and we need to modify the wire in there. Let's have a look at that. So here we have the ignition barrel that we unplugged earlier when we plugged in and fitted our micro switch bracket and micro switch. The ignition barrel is obviously going to have to be fitted up here in the dash panel. This loom that comes off the back of the ignition barrel, we actually want to cut this in half. Half of this loom is going to stay down here with the engine wiring and the other half is going to fit to the dash panel and obviously we're going to fill in between those two. So I'm going to grab my cutters and we're going to cut this loom in half. Let's grab my cutters, cut my loom, we can sit our ignition barrel off to the side, remove the shrink off our loom and we need to now terminate the end of this wiring with bullet connectors. Again, if you don't want to use bullet connectors, by all means use a different plug, use a Deutsch connector, use another four pin plug. We are just using bullet uh, terminals because they'd be the easiest to find. So let's plug this back into the engine loom and then we'll have a look at what wire has got to be terminated with what bullet terminal. Before we start stripping back our ignition barrel wiring loom, some of this wiring is actually live, so in order to basically turn the system off or disconnect the system, I'm going to take the negative terminal off the battery. So I'm going to do that first. So we've disconnected the battery. We're now free to go ahead and start stripping the wiring that goes to our ignition barrel. Now I'm going to strip on each of these probably about 15 millimeters or just over half an inch. Strip this back. Yep, that'll be enough. And again, if you don't like using bullet terminals, which personally we don't, by all means could you use a Deutsch plug or a different plug. 
The main reason, again, we've left the factory plug on the engine loom is if we need to swap out the engine loom at any time, everything is just gonna plug straight back into a factory loom. Okay, now that I've stripped those wires, I'm gonna twist them all, and then in a minute, I'm gonna ask Matthew, and he's gonna let me know what terminal they need or what bullet terminal they're gonna need. Okay, if we look at our first wire, which in this case, I'm gonna make a white with a black stripe or black with a white stripe. What do we need to fit to that one, Matthew? Male or a female? That one will be a female bullet connector. So let's grab a female bullet connector, slide it on, and crimp it in place. So while I'm doing that, we're gonna look at the next one, which is gonna be a green wire. What is the green wire gonna need? The green wire is a male bullet connector. Let's grab a male bullet connector, put it on the green. It's worth noting at this point, all the wiring throughout these carts, green is actually an earth cable. So a little bit counterintuitive. If you just think green as in green of the earth, green is earth. So black, if we look at black next, Matthew, what's black? Black is another male bullet connector. So black is a male. Uh, and lastly, we have a red. The red should be a female bullet connector as well. So this red wire, which it kind of seems like anyway, is a one of the main power wires that runs throughout the cart. That's why we definitely want to put a female on it so it can't arc out and cause problems. Okay. If we have a look at the four wires from our ignition barrel loom, looking across, we have our white with a black stripe, or that could be a black with a white stripe, which has a female bullet end. The red has a female bullet end. The black has a male bullet end, and the green has a male bullet end. Now that we've terminated that plug, We've terminated the plug over here that used to go up to our ignition kill switch and start button. It's now time to have a look at our actual dash setup that comes with the kit. Let's have a look at what's included in that kit and then we'll look at how to start putting it together. Once we've opened the dash panel kit, you will find an exterior grade carbon film, the aluminium laser cut dash panel, start, little race start button switch, a single press momentary switch, and two illuminated on off type switches, as well as the shift indicator. Before we start assembling our dash panel or drilling any holes or cleaning up anything, we need to firstly decide what you wanna run. Obviously, we're gonna have our ignition barrel fitted here and our start button. Our steering column is going to come through this hole. Then there's also some starting holes for where we could fit some switches. If you don't want to wire up or add, say, underglow, headlights, or anything else such as a horn, you probably are not going to need these three holes or three switches. In that case, we could just get on with the rest of the wiring. It's also worth noting at this point that the shift indicator that's gonna fit here is only gonna be needed if you've fitted a shift position switch to your engine before you put it in your cart. If you haven't fitted a shift position switch to your engine, the shift switch that would, the shift indicator, sorry, that would fit in this hole won't be necessary. For the pro cart that we're building behind me, for this video, we're gonna fit both a gauge, the shift indicator, our ignition barrel, our start, our race start button, 
We're also going to fit the momentary push button as a horn, both on-off switches. One of these is going to be used to turn on, on and off the brakes, or the brake lights, I should say. The other one is going to be used to turn on and off some LED underglow that will fit later on, probably well past when these videos are filmed. So now that we know what's going to be fitted to our dash, we need to drill out or open up these three holes. Rather than showing you how to drill out a couple of holes, we're going to grab a dash panel that we've already prepared. So here's a dash panel that we have prepared earlier. We have already drilled out these three holes to suit the switches that we require. Another note is before this gets bent, before it goes onto our carts, you can actually flip this if you want the switches on the other side of the steering wheel. So completely up to you, personal preference. You can put that way or this way. Now that we've drilled out all our holes, we understand that this wants to be facing forward we can place it over the edge of the bench and where these two slots are, we can bend it down. Now we want to bend the top part of this dash panel just past 90 degrees. Probably want to go to about 100, 100, 110 degrees. So if I spin it around, move the stuff back, put it on the edge of the bench like that and then using my palm, my hand, force it down. If you find this difficult, you could clamp this bottom part in a vise and pull it over that way. So I sit it there, use the palm of my hand. I can bend it down. So if we skip to where I bent that all the way over and we'll have a look at the rest. We've now bent over the top of our dash panel. It's worth noting the sizes that we drilled the three holes out for our switches. So the two on off switches, we've drilled out with a small hole saw to 20 millimeters. Then the momentary switch that's gonna be the horn button, we've drilled out to 16 millimeters. It's also worth pointing out that down here where the start button is gonna go in the corner, occasionally this needs to be filed out lightly with a round file as the start buttons that we purchase that we supply in the kits vary slightly in size and occasionally don't fit. So this one here, I went to fit the start button off camera and it doesn't fit. So I'm gonna lightly file out this hole. Then we'll come back to showing how to contact this with the carbon film. So off camera, we've filed out lightly the hole where the start button's gonna go. The rest of the holes are done. We also checked that the gauge fits, the shift indicator fits, all our switches, our ignition barrel and our start button. It's now time to fit the carbon fiber film. What we want to do is the top and bottom edge of this carbon fiber film is going to have a nice straight edge. I'm going to line up the top of that straight edge of the film with the very top edge of my dash panel here. So I sit it down on the bench, move my switches back, I grab that off mat, we'll open it up. I'll pull the backing off that film, sorry. I'm going to line up that straight edge with the top of the dash panel, like such, sticking it on. Now we're gonna grab a scalpel and we're gonna work around our way around the edges and through all the holes and we're gonna cut out all the excess material that we don't need. It's also worth pointing out at this point that if you were not using some of the holes in your dash, obviously don't cut the material out of those holes. Let's get this trimmed up, and then we can look at fitting all the components to our dash panel. So we've got our scalpel, we've got our dash panel we fitted the carbon fiber film to. If I flip it over, I wanna get in there and I'm gonna basically just cut out all the material that's not needed. We don't have to be terribly careful in all the holes because they're gonna be covered this side by the outside edge of the switches and the gauge and the start button. We really just need to be careful around the outside. So let's get it cut out. We've now trimmed out all the holes that we need in our dash panel. Again, we're not terribly concerned if there's a little bit of film hanging over any of the holes on the inside. We do, however, want to clean up this outside edge. If we leave a little bit of extra film hanging over on the edge, it could give somewhere where you hook and peel the film up later on. The best way to do this is to grab a flat file 
and we're going to work around the edge, giving it a light file downwards just to clean up that remainder of the outside edge. I'm going to go over to the bench. I'm going to do that now and then come back and show you guys what it looks like. All right, so Brett just got back. He just lightly ran a file over these edges. Pretty much the exact same thing if anyone's ever gripped up a skateboard before. The exact same thing. You just run over to just to get rid of that sharp edge so it can't peel up. Now that we've trimmed out all those holes and we've cleaned up the outside edge, we're going to fit each of the different pieces to the dash and show you guys how it's going to look. We've now fitted the shift indicator light, both our on off switches, momentary push button switch start button. We've also got the ignition barrel that we cut off the ignition loom earlier. I'm going to strip off the bottom sheathing on this and it's going to also click into our dash. We have purchased a RPM gauge or a taco, whichever you want to call it. You can purchase whichever gauge you wish to suit. You could do oil temp if you can get into the side of the engine, if you want to fit an oil cooler to yours later on. There's many other things that you can do. This is what we're going to use for our cart. I'll open it up and we'll have a look. Can we fit boost? Yes, all of it, Some, as much as you want. Somebody turbo their cart, put a boost gauge on it and show us, that'd be awesome. This is the gauge that we have chosen to put in ours. So RPM gauge. RPM gauge. 60 millimeter gauge, very important. Gauge is generally going to come in 52 millimeters across or 60 millimeters. This one being a 60 millimeter gauge to fit in the 60 millimeter hole. Perfect. So let's clock that. We'll get in the right spot, push that in. Just reckon the set. Beautiful. So our pretty much completed ProCart dash with a RPM gauge, shift indicator, ignition barrel, start button, two on off switches and a momentary switch. Before we can actually start wiring up any of this part of the dash, we're going to flip this around on the bench and we are going to use some polyurethane adhesive and we're going to glue each of these components in place, leave it overnight, and then we're gonna come back to the wiring. We're basically gonna do this so that nothing moves and it's all firmly mounted for the actual wiring. Let's, um, let's get the adhesive out and get each of these glued in place. There's a whole bunch of different brands uh, of adhesive that you could use. In this particular one, we're using the Sicker brand and it is a multi-purpose adhesive sealant. We tend to use this one. It's in black as well. It's not conductive. It sticks pretty good. But if you also at some point need to remove it, you can get in there with a blade, kind of cut it away and remove components still. It doesn't set absolutely rock hard, such as an epoxy. So I've got my polyurethane adhesive. I've taken the tip off. I now just want to put a little bit around each component just to hold it in place. We'll then take the dash panel and sit it off to the side and let it dry. Let's get them glued up. So just while Brett is putting the adhesive on here, locking everything up, after we are done and everything is terminated and we're happy with everything is, it's all tested and ready to run, we are then actually going to use the same adhesive to run over the top of all the terminals. It holds them in place and also stops them from coming loose or cracking or breaking or, or causing out. you any, any dramas, also arcing out. So. We'll show that once we're up to that stage, probably in the next video. Doing a great job. Thank you for holding it. Can we rotate it? Or is that it? Yeah, it doesn't have to get it everywhere. Now's the time to have a quick look and make sure everything's clocked exactly where you want it. If it's moved while you're doing this, now's the time to slightly move it because afterwards you won't be able to. Now that that is all done, we're going to set this off to the side to dry so that again, next video we will, or next episode, we're going to show you how to actually do the wiring. While this is also dry, drying or the last thing in this particular episode, we're going to show you how to mount the fiberglass race seats that we've produced. Let's go and have a look at that.
We're now back to working on the car. The last thing that we need to do is fit the fiberglass race seat. Now, before we do that, we had a key in the dash panel in the ignition barrel. It's really easy to lose that key, and the key is directly fitted to that barrel and generally can't be replaced. So, so you don't lose your key, Matt's gonna zip tie it to the steering wheel. It is very easy to lose the key and um, yeah, people are gonna laugh at you again. So the key's now zip tied to the steering wheel. We're gonna grab our fiberglass seat and sit it over the top. So why do we have these? These are actually a very exciting new product that we have come up with. We couldn't find a seat that was the right size to suit our cart. There was one generic seat that we could get and after they would get a little bit hot, they were a little bit flimsy, not as tall as what we'd like them to be. So we've come up with this design. It's like a mini bride seat. You can upholster them, you can paint them, you can make them super pretty, stickers. super, super strong. You can slap stickers all over them and they look sick. We have actually filled the back of ours with a heap of pretty glitter and then covered them in stickers. You can do anything you want to them. So we've got our fiberglass seat. We've set it in place. We just need to mark the four holes underneath. I'm gonna grab a right angle scribe and we'll show you how to mark out, drill, and then fit your seat. While Brett's doing that, just on another side note, these seats do not actually come with the pro cards. They are available to purchase separately. They will also be available through Panel House. In order to mark the position for our four mounting holes, Matt's holding a right angle pick. I'm gonna hold the seat in place. I've centered it uh, left and right. It's sitting flat and it's sitting uh, back against the roll bar. So Matt's gonna use the pick, the front bolt holes in the chassis, he's gonna mark from underneath and scratch a bit of a, uh, a marking on the underneath of the seat. So he's marked the first hole on the right side. It's a little bit fiddly under the side where he is now because there's a, a little bit of wiring and a few other bits and pieces. So I'll get him to put the pick down on the table, hold it really, really firm. Yep. Really firm more at the front because it's starting to pop up. Yep. And then I'm gonna mark the last two holes from the back. Now that we've marked the position of the four holes, I'm gonna grab a step drill bit and a drill, and we'll drill out those four holes. So we've drilled out the four holes in the bottom of our seat with a step drill bit. We've got the four mounting holes just there. We sit that back over the top. The seat also comes supplied with the hardware which is four large flat washers, four black countersunk M6 bolts. We're also gonna use the four M6 nylock nuts that were in the existing seat plate. So if we grab the countersunk bolt and put it through the washer and we'll start bolting our seat into place. We've now bolted down our seat. We use those it's important, sorry, to use those large flat washers that are supplied in the kit just to stop the fiberglass from ripping through the bolts. The last thing we wanna do, as the inside of this is raw fiberglass and it could be a little bit itchy, we've got some uh, bed liner type paint or the paint that you'd spray maybe under your wheel arches. And we're gonna spray the inside of the race seat with a black rubberized painting uh, paint just to kind of seal it and give it a bit of contrast. So let's paint the inside now and then we'll give everybody a look at what it looks like. All right guys, so we're finished up painting the seat. It's all mounted, looking fantastic. Brett's about to slap a sticker on there to give it the Carmack Revive tick of approval. Thanks for staying with us with this video. We have mounted the tail lights, all the hardware. We have prepped the dash for the wiring that we'll have to cover in our next video. Remember to like, subscribe, hit that bell thingy. And thanks for watching. Until next time, see you soon. See you soon. Yahoo! Yahoo! Flames. Pew, 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 pew. No, pew, pews.
Oh, Where's Flames? I did okay. the thing. Flames. Flames. <laughs> Started off that, not how I was going to. <laughs> you can okay. just continue on from that. Episode yeah. of episode seven. Yeah, okay. I like, took my breath away, which I yeah. always do. You take your own breath away. <laughs> Cheeky doll. Take note, ladies. Matthew takes his own breath away. I do. And then yours. <laughs> <laughs> Woohoo! That was it. That was good. Yeah. If you were to swap out this plain nut with a nylock nut, it's actually in order to do the next step of the wiring, we need to lift up and remove the foot plate. You don't it? sound like you're going to keep talking. <laughs> oh, well, okay. <laughs> okay. My Which one are we looking at? That one or that one? This no, one. We're always looking at that one, no matter what, that one. Yeah. I'm going to put a big that yellow one. smiley face above it. No, that's it. It's just that camera. That camera. That camera. That one. Can you see me? Yeah, you can see. Nobody wants to, but okay. he can. He's going to put that in. Have a look and see how it looks. Have a look and see how it looks. Yep. Is this right? Yeah. It feels funny. Can you see it? No. Hey! Kyohu wa teki de ari, mikata demo aru.